My name is uh, Yolanda Apperman. I'm an interventional cardiologist from Amsterdam VU University Medical Center. Uh, we are at, at uh, ASC in London. Uh, welcome to you all. And I want to introduce my two uh, co-workers uh, to you. Uh, first of all, uh, Dr. Mark Klaas from uh, Belgium. Welcome. And second, uh, Dr. Elmir Omevric from Sweden. And I would like to start with uh, questioning you. Um, because we had a session about uh, environmental triggers on acute MI. And I wanted to ask you, what do you see as the most important environmental triggers at this moment? What? Yeah, I think we had a very nice, very good session, very interactive, and uh, people have asked a lot of questions and uh, exp uh, um, will uh, give us their uh, opinions about the subject. Since I, my field of expertise is Takotsubo, I think the most important question, one of the most important questions that we address during the session is the role of psychosocial stress, negative emotional stress for development of the relatively new syndrome that we have uh, discussed that's called yeah. Takotsubo cardiomyopathy or broken heart syndrome. It looks like myocardial infarction, but it's not. So what we have established during the session is that it's much more frequently occurring in our societies than we previously thought. Yes. It's not so benign as we believed uh, before. And since it's so frequent, we don't have, and relatively new, we don't have so much evidence as we traditionally have or would like to have to apply in our everyday clinical practice. So yes. I will summarize it like psychosocial stress has perhaps the what is going on in our societies is triggering a new syndrome that we are more and more aware of. So yes. that would be my uh, answer yes. to that question. And maybe to add to it, you, it's, it's most common in el elderly women. Yes, it's most commonly in elderly women. The typical patient would be a patient, uh, a woman in, in her 60s that have had some kind of quite uh, quite a significant emo negative emotional stress and yes. he present, she presents with uh, signs and objective, objective uh, evidence of, of myocardial ischemia but the, it turns out to be that we don't have a problem with coronary perfusion it's more like a global effect on myocardial muscle in itself yes. that's causing these yeah. uh, changes at the organ level. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much and um, question for you because next to that stress, uh, emotional stress, what are other kinds of uh, environmental uh, triggers in your opinion? Is I think that at an individual basis, okay, emotional stress can be important, but when you look at the population level, I think the most important one are air pollution and also temperature. I just remind you a historical case in London in 1952, there was a big smog in one week in December, it was cold, a lot of air pollution, and at that moment there was an excess of 4,000 deaths in one week. It was the first time that you see a clear link between air pollution and health. And from that on, a lot of studies have been performed to look what is the reason of the link between air pollution and, and health. And it turned out that uh, air pollution um, uh, is risky not only for respiratory disease, but also for cardiac disease, because it has been associated with a moderate increase in myocardial infarction. And the reason for this increased risk uh, is probably related to the fact that by in inhalating all these kind of pollutants, uh, it will increase or it will trigger an inflammation and it will trigger a systemic inflammation which will uh, cause a progress of atherosclerosis. But so you that, also mentioned that temperature is much more Yes, yes, and that maybe this is a little bit under-recognized, but yes. temperature, we have looked at that in, in, into a multi-model uh, model, and we found that low temperature was indeed the most important trigger, uh, even more important than air pollution for um, uh, triggering a myocardial yeah. infarction and the reason for for that is related to the fact that we have skin receptors and uh, skin cold receptors and this exposure to cold will give some uh, autonomic dysfunction and will can give 
of elect in a, a myocardial yeah, infarction. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, and maybe short because we are almost at the end. Uh, what do you see as the most important challenge in Takotsubo? What do we need to know? Yeah, we we need we have more data in in the traditional sense of the word. We need more studies. How big is the problem in our societies? Do we treat these patients uh, extrapolating from the areas of myocardial infarction and acute heart failure? Or are these patients different from them and we need a new sets of rules yes. and therapies? Yeah. We need to uh, establish what is causing this and what are the mechanisms at the level of the, of the myocardium, the cells. Yeah. And uh, uh, I could also add that in Sweden, before 2005, this diagnosis was non-existing. Yeah. Now, having discovered that and by following it through our national registries, uh, we have come up on, with uh, surprising uh, numbers that this is quite common yeah. and every month in Sweden we have new 50, approximately 50 new cases uh, in all country. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I think it's an interesting uh, setting and we uh, summarized that Takotsubo is one of the triggers uh, that stress is one of the triggers for having an acute MI. There's still a lot uh, needing to know about the mechanism, about the therapy. And the same says for uh, other environmental triggers like air pollution and most important temperature. Uh, we should be aware of that. Uh, it's an important trigger to uh, get an acute MI. And there's a lot of, lot of research needed, I guess. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you a lot.